first stage, I want us to write this down, is the development of men. The first stage is we are born male. We are born male. You may say, well, it's obvious. Uh, not no more. We live in a generation where you can choose whether you're male or not. And I want to be respectful to people who are maybe struggling with that and have actually con like confusion in their mind and maybe fighting and, and hurting inside and not sure about their identity and their gender and everything. And I don't want to throw these general slogans that people like to do behind the pulpit and not actually knowing people who struggle with that. But the Word of God tells us that God made them male and female, which means that being a male is not your decision, it's your discovery. You don't decide to be a male, you only discover that you are one. You may say, how do we discover that? You go into the restroom and you discover. <laughs> so you are born a male, that's very important. Number two is you become a boy after that. A boy is a selfish kid. A boy, you may say, what is the difference between a boy and a man? Well, we're gonna see right now. A boy is someone who is passive. A man is assertive. Come on now. A boy lives for a moment, typically for the weekend. <laughs> a man plans for the future. A boy looks for a girlfriend. Man looks for a wife. A boy loves to speak, man acts. A boy is possessive and controlling, a man is protective. A boy plays games, a man shoulders responsibility. A boy tells others he's a man, a man quietly lives it. A boy makes excuses, man makes progress. A boy makes demands, a man serves other people. A boy lies and cheats and deceives, but a man tells the truth. His word is his bond. Even if it hurts him, even if it embarrasses him, even if it makes him feel bad, a man knows one thing. His value and worth is never determined by his gifts. It's not determined by his talent. But his money is determined by his integrity. And your integrity is as good as your honesty. Come on. When you are a boy, people are fed up with you. When you are a man, people are fed by you. A boy is somebody who lives in the flesh. Is guided by the flesh. You can be 24 and be a boy. You can be 40 and be a boy. Or you can be 12 and be a boy. But there's one characteristic about boys is people that are close to them that know them. Not those that see them on Instagram and Facebook and see them from a distance. But people that know them typically are fed up with them. They're fed up with their lies. They're fed up with them playing games. They're fed up with them not being consistent. They're fed up with their laziness. They're fed up with their addiction to the remote control. They're fed up with them being on their phone. They're fed up with them not reading the Bible, not praying. They're fed up with them not following God, not leading the family. They're always fed up. But a man, a real man, he is led by the Spirit of God, which means that he develops a fruit of the Spirit. What does the fruit does? Feeds other people. Now this man may impress the world, but his family is fed by him. A boy impresses the world, but he can never impress his family because see, your family is not impressed by your games. People that know you, close friends, they're not impressed by your skills or your gifts. They're only fed by your character or fed up by lack of it. Come on, somebody. This is not a good time to look at your husband. Not a good time to look at your husband. I see some wives. Not a good time to do that. It's a Father's Day. Preach it, Pastor, preach it. Number three. We grow to become a man. So we go from a boyhood to becoming a man. I want you to write this down. You're a male by birth. You're a man by choice. You're not born a man. You become a man. You don't become a man because you pass through puberty. You don't become a man because you can make a woman pregnant. You don't become a man because you got a muscle car. And you don't become a man because you got muscles. You don't become a man because you got a bachelor's degree. You don't become a man because you got a house. And you don't become a man because you got awards and trophies. You don't become a man because people call you a man. You don't become a man because you got a mustache. 
you don't become a man because you started to shave what what makes a man there's one word that makes a man maturity I know word maturity is used as a qualification to watch R-rated films. Are you mature? For mature only. Meaning you can consume junk. In the biblical definition of maturity, maturity is not your ability to consume alcohol, smoke, or watch porn. Biblical definition of maturity is something different than that because maturity is not age, maturity is not academics, maturity is not accomplishments, and maturity is not appearance. It's an attitude that you possess toward the things in life, toward yourself, toward people around you, toward your mistakes, toward your successes. Your maturity is always determined by your attitude. If you made a mistake, okay. I wasn't sure whether to go or not. And we see that in Adam, God gives him a word, you have to do this. And Adam goes into boyhood instead of manhood. Instead of leading his wife away from sin and instead of killing the snake, Adam sees his wife who has a weak moment, gets deceived by the, by the snake. And Adam stood there and the Bible says she, Adam stood beside her when the snake was doing the conversation and Eve is giving him that fruit. Adam was not deceived like Eve was. So Adam had a choice to help his wife. Says, hey honey, um, not a good time to talk to snakes. Put that apple back. Let's go back. Let, let me get you some mangoes and some other fruits. They're much better. Adam st stood there. Instead of being a warrior, he's a wimp. Instead of being aggressive against the enemy, he is passive. Instead of pursuing God, he just kind of stands there. Uh, you want me to eat the apple? Okay, I'll eat the apple. He eats the apple and you see Adam is a boy. He's not leading a woman to Christ. He's now blaming a woman. Because when God comes and says, who did this? Not me, her. Anytime a man doesn't follow Christ is where boyhood begins. When you ignore your consciousness as a man, the consciousness screams and says, don't! And you begin to silence it. You silence the Holy Spirit. He can't produce a character if he's ignored. You slip into the flesh. When Adam slipped into the flesh, something happened. Is the boyhood begins to be maximized that Adam now doesn't take responsibility for his junk. He blames it on somebody else blames it on Eve and Eve of course she blames it on the snake and da, da, da. and God begins to bring discipline on Adam why because Adam didn't mature see your sin is not the problem it's the fact how you deal with your sin that's the problem temptation is not the problem being attacked is not the problem being assaulted is not the problem it's how you respond to it when the holy spirit convicts you do you silence that or do you say yes holy spirit because your character is developed by the voices you obey do you obey the holy spirit or you obey the voice of the flesh do you obey the holy spirit or you do obey the voice of people a real man knows i respect you thank you but god says no i can't do that if you want to do that that's your choice but I am not going to do that why because I obey God I love you honey but before I met you I gave my life to someone who created you who created me and when I die I'm gonna stand naked not in front of you in front of him so I live my life for the opinion of one and your character is developed when you live like that come on, come on. number four when we get married we get married become a husband marriage makes you a husband maturity makes you a great husband when you get married you become a husband but when you are mature you become a husband good to live with a husband that a wife thanks God for a husband that the girlfriends say man you got a great husband and it's not because she posts the pictures of roses that you give once in eight months um, but it's actually because it's evident that you make your wife happy the problem that happens is when a boy skips the manhood stage and thinks that just because he got a thing between his legs he's ready to be a husband you're still a boy that needs to grow to become a man 
and when you're a man means when you're mature when you learn to deal with your stuff when you learn honesty when you learn to take responsibility when you learn the character when you learn to follow the Holy Spirit instead of following your flesh and you become a man something happens now you're ready for one more challenge because becoming a man was hard wait until you get a woman it will take you to another level because see your standard is not your dad your standard is Jesus Christ and you look at Jesus and Jesus doesn't play by these rules you don't like me I don't like you too you didn't satisfy me you didn't please me well <laughs> watch me that's not how Jesus left the example he came to the church and the church was at its worst and Jesus was at his best and Jesus never dumped us never left us never said a bad word never beat us never accused us Jesus was the great husband continues to be there's one thing about Jesus he's consistent <laughs> 